Welcome to the introduction to Igor Pro video tour. The purpose of this tour is to help you become familiar with many of the important concepts and features of Igor Pro. Igor Pro is an integrated program for visualizing, analyzing, transforming, and presenting experimental data. Some features of Igor Pro include the ability to create publication quality graphics, ability to handle large data sets, powerful curve fitting, Fourier transformations, smoothing, statistics, and other types of data analysis, waveform arithmetic, image display and processing, a unique combination graphical and command line user interface, automation and data processing via a built-in programming environment, and extensibility through modules written in the C and C++ languages. There are many types of objects that Igor provides. Four of the most basic objects that all Igor users work with are waves, graphs, tables, and page layouts. A collection of objects, including waves, graphs, tables, and page layouts, as well as the other object types I'll introduce later, is called an experiment and is stored in an experiment file. When you open an experiment, Igor recreates the objects that make up the experiment. Waves are the most important Igor concept. We use the term wave, which is short for waveform, to describe the Igor object that contains an array of values. Waves can have from one to four dimensions and can contain either numeric or text data. A wave typically consists of hundreds to thousands of values measured at evenly spaced intervals of a quantity, such as time or distance. Such data is often acquired from a digital oscilloscope scientific instrument, or analog to digital converter. The distinguishing trait of a wave is the uniform spacing of its values along an axis of time or another quantity. An Igor wave has an important property called X scaling that you can set to specify the spacing of your data. Igor stores the Y component for each point of a wave in memory, but it computes the X component based on the wave's X scaling. In this illustration, the wave consists of five data points, numbered 0 through 4. The user has set the wave's x scaling such that its x values start at 0 and increment by 0.001 seconds per point. The graph displays the wave's stored data values versus its computed x values. Igor is also capable of dealing with data that does not fit the waveform metaphor. We call this xy data. Igor can treat two waves as an xy pair. For each point in an xy pair, the data values of one wave supply the x component, and the data values of another wave supply the y component. A few analysis operations, such as Fourier transforms, inherently work only on waveform data. They take the x scaling of a wave into account. Other operations work equally well on waveform or xy data. Igor can graph either type of data, and its powerful curve fitting works on either type. Most users create waves by loading data from a file. You can also create waves by typing in a table, evaluating a mathematical expression, acquiring data from a data acquisition device, and accessing a database. The data that makes up a wave resides in memory. Each wave has a unique name that you can assign to it. You use a wave's name to designate it for display or analysis, or in a mathematical expression. Waves can be displayed in graphs and tables. Graphs are used to visualize waves and to generate high quality outputs for presentation. The traces in a graph are representations of waves. If you modify a wave, Igor automatically updates graphs. Igor labels the axes of a graph intelligently. Tick marks never run into one another and are always nice values no matter how you zoom in or pan around. Tables are used to enter, inspect, or modify wave data. A table in Igor is not the same as a spreadsheet and other graphing programs. A column in a table 
is a representation of the contents of a wave. Unlike in a spreadsheet, the wave continues to exist even if you remove it from the table or close the table entirely. Let me emphasize this point. Although waves can be displayed in graphs and tables, they exist independently of these representations. Therefore, killing a graph or table window displaying a wave doesn't kill the wave itself. Page layouts permit you to arrange multiple graphs and tables, as well as pictures and annotations, for presentation. If you modify a graph or table, either directly or indirectly, by changing the contents of a wave, Igor automatically updates its representation in a page layout. Along with waves, graphs, tables, and page layouts, Igor has several additional object types that you are likely to encounter. A numeric variable stores a single number, and a string variable stores a text string. Numeric and string variables are used for storing bits of data for Igor procedures. A data folder can contain waves, numeric variables, string variables, and other data folders. Data folders provide a way to keep a set of related data, such as all of the waves from a particular run or experiment, together, and separate from like-name data from other sets. A notebook is like a text editor or word processor document. You can use a notebook to keep a log of results or to produce a report. Notebooks are also handy for viewing Igor technical notes or other text documentation. A control panel is a window containing buttons, checkboxes, and other controls and readouts. A control panel is created by an Igor user to provide a user interface for a set of procedures. A 3D plot displays three-dimensional data as a surface, a scatter plot, or a path in space. A procedure window contains code which performs a task by calling Igor's built-in operations and functions and possibly other user-defined or external functions and operations. Igor code can range from simple to very complex and powerful. You can run procedures written by Wavemetrics or by other Igor users. If you are a programmer or want to learn programming, you can learn to write your own Igor procedures to automate your work. Now that you are familiar with Waves and other Igor objects, here's a brief overview of Igor Pro's user interface. I've already mentioned that Igor has a unique graphical and command line based interface. What this means is that most capabilities within Igor can be triggered by executing a command on the command line or by using a graphical dialog. The command window is the link between these two interfaces. When you type a command on the command line, and hit enter or return, Igor executes that command. A copy of the command that was executed, as well as the results of analyses such as curve fitting or waveform statistics, is placed into the history area, giving you a record of what commands were executed and in what order. The title of the command window is the name of the current experiment. The command window also includes a help browser button. Just click on this button to bring up the Igor help browser. Menus and dialogs provide easy access to the most commonly used Igor operations. When you choose a menu item associated with an Igor operation, Igor presents a dialog. As you use the dialog, Igor generates a command and displays it in the command box near the bottom of the dialog. When you click the Do It button, Igor transfers the command to the command line where it is executed. If you wish to use the dialog to build the command, but want to edit the command before it is executed, you can click the To CMD Line button, which will copy the command to the command line, but will not execute it. Alternately, you can copy the command to the clipboard by clicking the To Clip button. This button is especially useful when writing procedures, as you can use the graphical interface to build the command you wish to execute from a user-defined procedure. At some point, you're likely to need help with some aspect of Igor. When this happens, the first place you should probably go is the Igor Help Browser. You can access the Help Browser from the main Help menu. You can also click the Help Browser button in the Command window, or hit the F1 key on Windows, or the Help key, if your keyboard has one, on the Macintosh. 
The Igor Help Browser has five tabs along the top that allow you to access help in different ways. The Help Topics tab will allow you to browse the topics and subtopics in all currently loaded help files. The Shortcuts tab makes it easy for you to learn the different shortcut key combinations and techniques. The Command Help tab is especially useful because it provides reference information on Igor operations and functions. Click on the name of a function or operation on the left side to see detailed information on the right side. The Search Igor Files tab allows you to search the text of Igor help, procedure, and example files. The Manual tab provides a quick link to the complete Igor manual in PDF format, which is installed in the manual subdirectory of your main Igor Pro installation directory. Finally, the Support tab provides information on additional support resources you can use when you can't find an answer to your question using the methods discussed so far. Now that you've gotten to the end of this introduction, you should be familiar with many of the basic concepts in Igor Pro, but you probably aren't an expert yet. I recommend that you go through the guided tours, which will give step-by-step -step instructions for common tasks such as importing and exporting data, creating and modifying graphs and tables, and analyzing data in Igor. Depending on your speed, completing all of the tutorials may take a few hours, but there are many convenient stopping points along the way, and in any case, this is time well spent. The easiest way to get to the guided tours is to click on the Getting Started menu item under the main Help menu. Since this video tour covers the Introduction to Igor Pro chapter, you can skip to the general tour. Alternately, you can watch the series of video tours that follow the same set of instructions as the written tours do. Another great way to become familiar with Igor is to explore the included example experiments, which you can access by choosing the Example Experiments menu item found in the main file menu. There are quite a few example experiments covering many techniques and features of Igor. Most have instructions for how to use them and often have an explanation of what they are useful for and how they were written. Thanks for watching and happy Igoring!